Awesome, welcome. Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on overview of Grasshopper, how to get started on the right foot, and some really helpful resources out there. Okay, so first things first, let's just take a quick look at some resources that I really like, and I'll include those in the description. The first one is this wiki, BK to Delf, and they, they have other software as well, uh, as and it just hands down, it's it, it's amazing. I mean, it's just, it's basically a user manual of how to use the tool, uh, and I found it extremely helpful in really learning and understanding how a grasshopper works, so highly recommend this. The other thing I want to mention is just the grasshopper3d.com site. It has great forum support and learning in this tab getting started and you can watch some introduction videos and um, all that kind of stuff and then also this mode lab here is a really helpful resource so uh, be sure to check that out too the first thing i would like to say is don't get overwhelmed with grasshopper it doesn't have to be a super complicated thing you can learn a little bit about it and it can still be a really powerful tool a lot of videos out there just do these crazy complicated things and they're not necessarily always practical for you to figure out how to do something. Uh, so this video is really geared towards not just the opening up the initial uh, program, but also uh, starting to learn how you can learn the tool as well. So let's type in Grasshopper and you can only open Grasshopper within Rhino. It's not a separate program that it's, it's linking. Okay, so here is our main interface. You'll notice if you scroll in or out, yeah, you zoom in or out, and then you have your various tabs. Um, these are really helpful to reference and just hover over them and start to learn uh, what which each one does and get getting familiar uh, with these different tabs is really helpful. And then of course, later on, once you really get to learn Rhino, you can start to add these uh, various plugins that can be really helpful. So uh, there's infinite amount of plugins, check them out. Okay, so the first thing uh, we're gonna look at is just the interaction between Rhino and Grasshopper. And then we're gonna do a quick demonstration on um, how that interaction works and different ways that you can go about that. Okay, so first things first, uh, Typically you double click and you type in a command uh, to create something. So if I wanted to uh, link a point, I would double click and type in point. And if I want to have a surface, I would double click, have a surface. Now there is, if I go to the surface tab, you'll notice um, there are primitive elements. So those are gonna be elements that you are typically creating within Grasshopper itself. And then you're gonna have uh, elements that are analyzing a specific thing. Don't need to go into those. Um, and then you're going to have um, items that you're referencing. So in this case, the referencing, we're referencing something that's in Grasshopper itself. So an example of this to just show you here, if we made a point, I would come into Grasshopper and I would right click, there's this drop down menu, and you'll see set one point. And then I'm gonna set one point. Now this point is linked. And so I move it and you'll notice that there's that green um, thing on there that kind of shows you that this item is linked together. Okay. So similarly, you can make a surface. So let's make a surface from some points. And then let's set, right click, uh, set one surface. You can also set multiple surfaces. Uh, so if we did solid point on, I could select one of these points and I'm, I'm changing the surface and it's also alive in Grasshopper. So they're really operating in, in both environments. So you can see that it's highlighted red. That shows you that it's that it's linked and when you click on it it's green another thing to be aware of that's really important are these display modes um, and there's both draw and display personally I, I really like the actual icons but I know for people that are learning the software learning grasshopper for the first time or when you're watching a tutorial 
it's easier to find something if it has the name on it. But I'm just used to it um, being in this, this display mode. All right. Uh, also, uh, if you're on a Mac, it will display slightly differently, um, and you can come in here and, and mess with those settings to get it to look similar to this. Okay, so that talk we so that went over linking a surface uh, from Grasshopper to Rhino. The other thing that you can do is you can create a surface in Grasshopper. So what I mean by that, creating a surface in gra Grasshopper, is let's say I had a surface from points. Let's say I had a boundary surface. And the first thing with all these components is I always highlight and look at this component and I'm going to look at what are the inputs that this component needs and wants in order for it to function. And what are the components that are going to come out of it? So in this case, you're creating a surface. So that is the result. What, what does this item need? And sometimes in order to figure out how to do something, you actually need to place the last component that you would want. Like, let's say if I wanted to extrude this surface or something, I would first type in that component and sometimes reverse engineer what I need to figure out. Okay, so here we have, we have points. So it, it needs points. Okay, it needs points. It needs a U count. Okay, and it interpolates samples. It, doesn't necessarily need that, but these are the most important ones are the ones up here. So uh, points. Okay, well, we do have a point. So maybe I'll plug this in. It doesn't really do anything. Um, that's because this is only uh, one point. So let's uh, create a series of points. So you can create these series of points in, in Grasshopper, or you can create them in um, in Rhino, it's it's up to you. So, let's say we were to create a series of points. We had these, and again, if I do Alt, I can drag, and it copies it. So, let's select these points, and then we're going to need a U count. So, if I double click, I can create a slider. So, I'll type in ten and it should automatically have a number slider in there. And we're gonna do these points separately. So um, set one point. All right, and we can start to see how we could now move around these points and uh, create a surface by moving these points around. So sometimes the result is, is weird if it's not um, calculating it correctly. Um, so just keep an eye for, out for that, like if you can have some weird uh, intersections sometimes. So another thing is, so I created those points in Grasshopper. Now, an additional layer is you could construct those points. I don't need to go into this completely. I just want to know. I just want you to know that it's it's there, and that you can do it. Um, and again, you just put points, and you're you're actually constructing a point. So this is construct point, and you're giving it. Again, I would outline. Okay, it needs an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and a z coordinate, and really all those are are numbers. Um, and so. Now you can move around this point, and you can use uh, that as one one as your one of your points. Okay, so the sample that we're going to do is going to be a box morph, which takes geometry and morphs it onto a surface. Uh, it, it's a it's a nice example because uh, it's pretty simple, um, it's fun, uh, and I hope you like it. So we're going to actually start off with this box morph tool to begin with. Box, morph, 
I'm going to see box morph. All right, and we're going to look at what does this function need? What does this, this, this program need? Okay, so we have our base geometry. No, we don't have our base geometry yet, but we do have a reference box and we do have our target box. Okay, interesting. So it doesn't need the surface yet. Um, so we'll, we'll get back to sort of reversing engineering that. But it does need geometry and it does need a reference box. So let's create some geometry and we might as well just make it a little bit interesting. And I'm doing control shift and I can go solid point on and then um, I can kind of just do something a little bit different there. Okay. So, okay, it needs geometry. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to type geometry. And then I'm going to right click and set one geometry and then plug in geometry. Okay. So geometry. Oh, but wait a second. It needs a reference box. Okay. So I'll come up to these various tabs. Maybe it's under analysis. Look through that. Don't really see a bounding box, something close to that. Um, let's go to primitive and we have here solve oriented geometry bounding boxes. Okay. So there's not really any way that you would intuitively know that. Um, but you can kind of reverse engineer. It needs some kind of reference box. Uh, you can come in here and either analysis or this primitive bounding box. All right, so, and if you highlight over, it says solves oriented geometry bounding boxes. So bounding boxes, and then we have a reference box. So, and then you can look at what comes out of this. So this is a box that comes out of this. Okay, so we can plug that into our reference box and then we'll see content and we'll see the plane. So let's first just type in the content and we'll see that it's going to create a bounding box around our geometry. So some things are not 100% intuitive. Some, some things are just a matter of, of knowing it and learning it. Uh, but if you keep on looking at and highlighting, what does this, what does this thing need? And what can I input? And sometimes it's not intuitive, but sometimes it is. And that's the way that you can start to really uh, learn and understand the tool. Okay, so now we have a service that we want to map this to. Um, so we need to analyze it. Uh, so let's look through some of these tools here. Operators, no, no params. Let's look at geometry. That's all native input. Uh, let's go to sets. So this is looking at sequences different math sets, text. We don't need to worry about that. Um, so these are different mathematical operations. And so they can construct, um, well, we don't, know, don't need to get into it, but here we have a divide domain square. It divides a two dimensional domain into equal segments. So what this target needs, and it doesn't necessarily say that, uh, but it needs a domain. It needs to know the segments in which to orient this geometry. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll input this. So here we have our domain, base domain, and then we will type in um, the slider. So here we'll put in 10, 10, and we'll do our UV uh, domain and just plug it in. And there is an error. Okay, so then we need to create a U count and a V count. So those are the, the two directions there. So let's do a 10 and a 10 and type those in. Okay, so now we have a surface, segments as a list, uh, and then we have our target box. So it needs boxes to orient the boxes. <laughs> so you have a reference box, um, but then it wants a basically to create boxes along your surface. And so we need a similar command as this box command. So, but I think I just have to type this one in. So surface box. 
oh, here we go. So I wonder where that is. And so when you do the, when you highlight over this, create a twisted box on a surface patch. So it's going to create boxes on a surface. Oh, what does this object need? It needs a surface. So type in a base, a base surface. Oh, that's not that. It needs the base surface. So if we highlight over here, base surface, that's our original surface. Then it's going to need our domain. Okay. We've now created a, a domain so we can give it that. And now it creates basically a grid. It's a you know, box, series of boxes along our surface. Now, if I double click this number, I can come in here and do max. So let's do 50 and let's come in here and do 50. Okay. And now we can adjust that resolution. All right, so the last thing we need is our target. So we're going to take our boxes and paste geometry, reference box, target. So let's move this up. All right, so you can see that this has been here. Um, there's one last thing though, there is this height command. And so that's going to give the height uh, and you can see that this thing is kind of getting uh, squished. And so let's just do 25, type this height in, uh, now we can control the height. So what's cool about this is you have this height command. Now there's all these options to adjust or have a variation of height to start to give this a little bit more complexity. And that would be sort of starting to build off of this uh, example. You could, you know, have a range of heights that you're giving this. Okay, so we'll see here that it's generated our surface. And now when I go to change this or change that, changing the geometry. Now the last thing that we want to do is we want to right click and bake. And so the reason why we bake, bake is because we need to have it bake into the, um, the software itself. So let's turn off the preview so we cannot see any of this stuff. And then that's what we have um, baked and created based off of our surface. Cool. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, please like and subscribe and stay up to date with the latest videos that will be coming out. Thanks again. Let me know what you think and any videos that you'd like to see in the future. Awesome. See you around.